Hey folks, uh, Stephen from LOJ here with another project car update, again this time with Project 427Z. Today I want to talk about the cooling system on this car. Um, obviously when you're installing an engine into a car that came from a factory with 220 horsepower in non-turbo form or 300 horsepower, 320 in twin turbo form, um, the factory radiator is not going to sufficiently cool an engine that's going to make 700 to 750 crank horsepower. Um, so one of the things we're going to do on this car to address that is install a nice aftermarket radiator uh, custom made for us by CNR Racing. They do all of the radiators for LOJ's conversions. Um, that radiator is going to be three inches thick, be a double core PWR core radiator. And um, because the radiator is so thick and because an LS engine is longer than the V6 that came in this car, you really run into radiator fan clearance issues on these conversions. So what we're going to do, we've done it on other client cars, and it's what we do when, whenever we sell a race-style radiator to one of our clients. Um, we have to cut the radiator support out and remove the hood latch um, and convert to a hood pin setup so that we can cant the radiator forwards and give ourselves enough room to install a 16-inch spout fan on the back side of the radiator as a draw-through to cool this car. Now this car is going to live its life in the south. The client is from Georgia. He intends to street drive this car a lot, um, take it out maybe to the tail of the dragon a couple times a year. It's not a race car, it's not a dragster, it is a cruiser for this gentleman. Um, so yeah, I know 750 horsepower in a cruiser, but that's what he wants, so that's what he gets. And um, one of the other things that LOJ does on all of our 300ZX conversions, and it's really critical on these cars, and it's, it's often overlooked on these conversions as well as on a lot of LS conversions, uh, is we install a product that we call an LS heater bypass block. And what that does, if you're familiar with the way the cooling system is designed in an LS vehicle, a car that came with an LS engine from the factory, any GM application, when you shut the heat off in one of those cars, heat or coolant still flows through the heater core hoses up to the heater core and back to the engine, whether the cooling system or the HVAC system is diverting air around the heater core or there is a bypass valve inside that diverts the coolant around the heater core but still allows coolant to flow through those hoses. And if you're familiar with swaps in these cars, you know that you can't just cap the, radi or the heater core hoses and block flow there because you'll end up starving the backside of the impeller on the water pump for coolant, which will cause cavitation, introducing air bubbles, and eventually causing the car to overheat. Um, so you have to, at the very least, loop those hoses if you're not going to run heat in the vehicle. But on Nissan vehicles, at least in, of this vintage, when you shut the heat off in one of these cars, there's a valve that closes and stops flow through the heater core. So what you do, essentially, in the summertime when you're driving this car without the heat on, if you didn't have this heater bypass block, it's just like capping the hoses on the water pump. You get cavitation, so it's a compounding effect. You've you stop flow in the summer when you need the cooling system to operate at its most efficiency. So what we did with this heater bypass block, it's, it's a very simple design, but what it allows is when the heater coolant flow stops through the hoses going to the heater core, there is a bypass inside of this that allows the coolant to then return to the water pump. So you still have flow through those hoses, even though the valve is shut off at the heater core inside the car. It's a way that we ensure that the cooling system operates at its utmost efficiency even in the summer when it's needed the most and you're not using the heat in the car. Um, so that's some of the things we do on the cooling system in this car. That's what we're going to be doing on this particular car is that race style radiator. Um, we're also going to add an external oil cooler to this engine with a thermostatic takeoff plate on the oil filter relocation uh, block there. That way that uh, we're not overcooling the oil in the colder climates. The oil temperature is controlled properly so it can evaporate off contaminants and, and things of that nature. And we'll also be installing an external power steering cooler on the front of the radiator. So um, a, lot of, a lot of different heat management uh, efforts are going into this build. And uh, I look forward to posting up some more pictures and posting up more uh, video blogs about what's going on with that build as those steps take place. So uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in and checking out what's going on with this car and we will talk to you soon.